first things that we're going to need to start with, of course, are the goals. So let's start right here at goals. Oh, oh, Jasmine, are you okay? Oh, sit down, sit down. Are you okay? Are you okay? You don't sound right. You're slurring your words, and you're really leaning to the right. I think you're having a stroke. I'm going to call 911. It's not, it's not right. Yes. My coworker, I think she's having a stroke. She's slurring her words, and she's leaning over to the right. She just can't sit upright. Her whole right side seems to be weak. Our patient is having a stroke, and you can see that the public plays a crucial role in the stroke chain of survival by recognizing stroke symptoms and activating EMS by calling 911. Timely EMS response and following guidelines for stroke care, including the use of stroke assessment tools like BFAST and VAN, checking the blood glucose level as low blood sugar can mimic a stroke. I got one time for glucose. Obtaining an accurate history and the patient's last known well time are key. Hi, Jasmine. Can you stick your tongue out? Okay. Squeeze my fingers really tight. Tight, tight, tight. Tight as you can. Time is brain with a stroke, so our EMS providers will limit their on-scene time. Continuing with the stroke chain of survival, the EMS providers will quickly transport to and notify a hospital that is certified as a stroke center. During transport, the EMS provider will start an IV, perform an EKG reading, and reassess their patient's condition. Squeeze my hands real tight, 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 tight. Hold your hands straight up for me, don't let them fall. Good job. It is very important for the EMS crew to immediately notify the hospital to ensure the emergency department team is ready for the patient's arrival. The EMS provider will give a HEAR hospital emergency ambulance radio report during transport to the ED communications coordinator, which includes critical information that will assist in activating a code neuro for stroke on arrival. Mary Washington. Hi, this is Georgia, Fredericksburg Medic 2. I'm en route to you with a 27-year-old female with approximately a three to four minute ETA with a possible code neuro. She is currently awake and oriented. Vital signs are as follows. Respirations are 18 and clear. Pulse is 85 and regular. Last BP was 148 over 99. Pulse is 98% on room air with a GCS of 15. Her blood sugar is 110. She is BFAS positive and negative. Onset of symptoms were approximately 9.30 this morning, which was also her last known well. If you have no further, again, we have about a two to three minute ETA. Nothing further, see you when you get here. Attention please, code neuro, ED, level one. The code neuro announcement signals a stroke patient is on the way to the ED. The EMS crew and patient are greeted immediately on arrival to the emergency department by a physician and nurse who perform a quick stroke assessment and make immediate decisions on care. We call this a swarm, as the patient is assessed while still on the EMS stretcher and the clock is started to ensure the hospital continues to meet their stroke care targets and treatment times under the guidelines for stroke care. This is the fourth step in the stroke patient chain of survival. Code Neuro is activated using a hospital overhead page and a text is sent to the specific hospital stroke group team. It can be activated prior to a stroke patient's arrival to the emergency department with pre-notification by EMS or on arrival following the ED patient swarm. Under a Code Neuro activation, a physician, neurologist, and nurse's job are to be the first ones to respond when the patient arrives and assess what symptoms they're experiencing and identify where the stroke is located, whether in a large or small vessel in the brain. Code Neuro applies to any patient with new stroke symptoms, such as our mock patient, Jasmine, who is experiencing acute right-sided arm and leg weakness and speech difficulties like slurring, with time that patient was last seen well as less than six to 24 hours. The patient then immediately undergoes imaging with a CT CAT scan to determine the type of stroke. In the radiology imaging department, 
The CT technician makes sure that everything is set up urgently for the scan. Prior to the CT scan, the team works together to perform multiple tasks. Receive the EMS report, the physician assessment, IV access by an RN if not completed by EMS, bedside glucose, obtain patient weight, lab draw by a lab technician. Additional treatment may include thrombolytic medications administered through an IV. A radiologist will read the CT scan and document the results and notify the physician. At Mary Washington Hospital Primary Stroke Center, we have implemented a new artificial intelligence mobile application. It is the latest technology used by these professionals, which alerts multidisciplinary care teams earlier in the workflow. Images can be analyzed by physicians off-site and treatment plans put into motion much more quickly. This AI technology, for example, helps identify patients for treatment quicker, triage patients to the right hospital stroke center quicker, and recognize patients who may need surgical procedures to remove blood clots in the brain. The final step in the stroke chain of survival is quality post-stroke care that takes place in the hospital, rehab facility, or even in the patient's home. As you can see in the case of our mock stroke patient, Jasmine, she experienced a full recovery. Due to her coworker, Susan, recognizing possible stroke symptoms and calling 911 immediately, Jasmine was able to receive the rapid stroke care and treatment she needed. Everyone works as a team to make sure the stroke patient's chain of survival stays intact all the way through.